Just one word of warning before I start this vlog. Iraqi Kurdistan is probably not going to be what you expected it to be because when I first visited it six months ago, it certainly shattered pretty much all of my preconceptions. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you about Iraqi Kurdistan. I'm going to show you its capital, Erbil. Here's a quick lowdown on where I am right now. Kurdistan is an autonomous region in the northern reaches of Iraq. Despite tensions in the recent past, it's pretty safe to visit these days. In fact, I like Iraqi Kurdistan so much that it's my second time here in just six months. And Erbil, the capital of Iraqi Kurdistan, overflows with history, yet few people outside of the region know about it. See, it's one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. People have been living here for over 7,000 years. And all this history and culture still survives here, very much survives here in Iraqi Kurdistan. There's probably one really good place where I can show you some of it, and that is the main bazaar. <laughs> I have this theory about bazaars. I believe them to be the true and authentic gathering places for people and cultures. Anywhere in the world, the bazaar always seems to be the busiest and liveliest spot in the city, no? And here in Erbil, it's no different. See, on my very first visit to Erbil, I went past this little shop and I bought myself a pretty stunning cap and shawl right here. It's still one of my favorite items, probably one of the coolest things I own. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, excellent. I still have my hat. Let's try this on. Alright, the traditional Kurdish cap. <laughs> Good? <laughs> How about this? Embellished caps and turbans are a key part of the Kurdish traditional dress and they're still widely worn here, especially by men. My thread is me. Yeah, Shorts. yeah. It's my favorite Welcome. piece. <laughs> Thank you. <Welcome>. Bye. Bye. <laughs> they remember me. That's so nice. But there is much more to Kurdish culture than fashion. In one of the side alleys of the bazaar, I noticed a tiny hole-in-the-wall carpentry shop and its owner invited me right in. Come here, sit down. I got a chair, I got a seat in this shop. You make it. This gentleman here makes all these baby pots. This shop is 100 years old. Yes, yes. My father. This, this, this. Oh, okay. This, no, 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 no. What candy? You had to say halas. Enough. Halas, Thank halas. you. <laughs> There's one more place here at the bazaar that has a really significant history that I'm really keen to find. It is called Mam Khalili. But where do I find it? This bazaar is huge. It's like a maze. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh wow. What's that? Gold. Gold. Do you know where Mam Khalili is? Mam Khalili? This. Here? No. Next one? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, that was easy. Let's go. Every city in the world has a tea house like this. The cultural anchor, the gathering place, the living museum, that spot your grandfather would visit every week to meet with his buddies for a long and slow cup of tea. That one spot which holds tradition in place and preserves decades of memories. This cafe is called Mam Kali and it's been in operation since 1963. I'm getting myself a chai. The walls of the Mam Kali tea house are lined with photos of all the famous Kurds who have come here. It's the oldest cafe in the entire city and the locals love it so much that many have been coming here since childhood. The owner claims that everyone who sits down at Mam Kalili must drink more than a single cup of chai. Well, that's definitely something I can get behind. Right here at Mam Kalili and in Kurdistan in general, chai is drunk very simply. Strong, no milk, plenty of sugar. Yep, a whole lot of sugar. Cheers. <sighs> Perfect. This stuff really wakes you up. <laughs> Alright, halas with the tea and let's take this vlog back to street level. This is one of the traditional Kurdish flutes. I'm here with 
back here. Yes. <laughs> Who is telling me about all these traditional Kurdish flutes? Tell me again the name. Bilwe. Bilwe. That's a Shimsha Balaban. Yes. This is traditional Kurdish music. Uh, it's not accomplished Kurdish music. Traditional Kurdish music. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a personal lesson in flute playing from back here, right here. <laughs> we also have an audience. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Wow, thank you, thank you, Bakir. Thank you very much. Hello. This is my flute. Oh, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Hello, <laughs> okay. Hello. Bye. Thank you. Very much. Hello. Bye. Thank you. Hello. Look at that. What a lovely souvenir from Iraqi Kurdistan. One of the traditional Kurdish flutes, straight from back here. He also taught me how to play a bit. I think I'll just leave that to him. And while for Bakir the flute is the way to preserve his Kurdish heritage, there's something else I want to show you. And this is something I've seen almost every Kurdish man engage in. There is one little quirk about Iraqi Kurdistan and you will notice this behavior very very frequently and it's related to these. These are prayer beads. Now a lot of older Kurdish gentlemen more specifically can be found playing with these beads the entire time. Just fiddling with them, playing with them, just constantly in their hands and nobody really knows where it comes from because it's not always related to prayer let's put it that way some say that it's related to simply relieving stress people got so used to playing with these beads that it's become a national hobby and you can find them in all kinds of patterns and colors and qualities some of them are absolutely exquisite in their craftsmanship and will set you back a few hundred bucks some of them are factory made, others are hand sculpted and painted. But the main thing is that you will find these prayer beads absolutely everywhere in Iraqi Kurdistan. A true national pastime. And towards the end of the day, in the evening, families and friends gather here on the main square of Erbil, drink tea and juice. Simply enjoy. <laughs> now I think a lot of people don't quite know about this side of Iraq or Kurdistan or Iraqi Kurdistan. In fact, I think a lot of people don't even know that you can come to Iraqi Kurdistan. But this is such an incredible region, right? <laughs> it's a great region. <laughs> people are really, really friendly and I highly recommend that you visit. Oh, Ava! Oh, look, he remembers my name! Hello, hello, hello. hello. how are you? Hello. Hello. I was speaking to these gents yesterday. Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. See, Iraqi Kurdistan, come here and see you in the next vlog. Shortly after filming this vlog, I learned from my local friends that Bakir, the flute maker, passed away in the meantime. I'd like to dedicate this vlog to his memory and to the hearts of all the people preserving Kurdish culture all around the world.